years have told us anything, the best way to fuck up a good Star Wars story is clones. And this game shows us exactly why. I speak, of course, of The Force Unleashed 2. The Force Unleashed was one of the best standalone titles LucasArts ever made. So to come back with this piss poor effort just insults the entire franchise. It can only be described as. BETRAYAL! Thank you. I'm not gonna lie, this game was horribly disappointing to me back in the day, and the last couple of years have not made it seem any better. But, let's get into it. Let's get things started with the story. The story begins with a cutscene that shows exactly what is wrong with this game. Gone is the subtle performances from the first game. Instead, it's full-on wooden prequel style with Starkiller's clone unable to strike down Juno because he loved her in another life. I can't seriously believe someone got paid to write this. Anyway, Vader decides the clone is worthless and is going to kill him. But the clone breaks out and the tutorial begins. For here on out, it's a lackluster rehash of the first game, reuniting with people that, ironically, you, the clone, have never met, and spending a good chunk of the game Wondering if you're really a clone, or if you're actually a brainwashed star killer. I know you're thinking this sounds great, and it would have been had they gone anywhere with it, but we'll get to that in a minute. One problem with the story of this game is it is randomly jump forward in time, Dragon Age 2 style, where you won't know if it's been about an hour, a week, or possibly even a couple of weeks in between cutscenes. And the ending absolutely makes me a wretch. No spoilers from me. But it'll piss you off, I guarantee you, as much as that which shall not be named. On top of that, they completely rip off Empire in a horrible scene on Dagobah. With... It, hasn't Yoda done, been screwed over enough by Lucas at this point without anyone else trying to ram it in, for lack of a better term? This game is absolutely cringeworthy. And I guarantee you, that scene brings down the score. There's a somewhat spoilers, it's about halfway through the game, but fuck it, I'm going to talk about it anyway. Starkiller decides he needs to go to Dagobah to meditate. And, of course, he finds Yoda. Yoda is literally sitting outside the infamous Cave of the Dark Side. They come, Starkiller lands, he talks to Yoda, he walks to the cave, has an experience. Anyone who was ever a fan of the Sorcerer Yoda is sitting there going, what the fuck? Why would Yoda ever do this? Why would he be so straightforward with Starkiller, version 2, and never even once mention anything related to the Empire or the Galaxy? It's as if he just doesn't give a fuck. He is literally Bizarro Yoda here. It's like they took his personality and flipped it from Empire. And bear in mind, Empire and this game are not really that far apart. You're only looking at about maybe seven years. Difference between this game and Empire. And as if that wasn't insult enough, that entire thing, I finished the game in 3 hours and 45 minutes, and I am by no means a pro. That is downright criminal to expect someone to pay $60 for a game that is less than 4 hours. The DLC for Force Unleashed 1 is almost as long as the entirety of Force Unleashed 2. It is unforgivable, and it makes a huge black mark, not only on this game, but on the entire legacy of LucasArts, and it shows how far they have fallen from their once lofty heights. Overall, the story of this game gets a 1 out of 10, an epic failure on every level. It's piss poor writing, piss poor dialogue, piss poor pacing, barely any story, and less than 4 hours long. Next, we'll take a look at the gameplay. Then play wise they did improve the first game by giving the hero a second lightsaber. This speeds up combat. However, they added very few things like new combos or powers to take advantage of this. It feels like they took the first game and said, make it faster and more intense. A Lucas standard, I'll admit. The powers have been made stronger, but it's still the same power. And boss battles feel like they're taking a step back. Instead of being fun and inventive as they were in the first game, here they're just tedious and frankly unfun. It is in some ways better but in a lot of ways worse than the original. New enemies in this game, in most cases, don't even fit into the Star Wars universe. Case in point, there are phasing ninjas in this game. Do games think this is still new and inventive? This is not avant-garde anymore. It's been done to death. You don't have to have enemies phase randomly to be hard. 
Just program some damn AI that can match us. Overall gameplay earns a 5 out of 10. It is an average hack and slash. That's it. None of the style, the nuance, the builds from the original can even be found here. Next up, we'll take a look at the graphics. Now, one thing this game did get correct is when a lightsaber hits an enemy, it actually cuts through them. Unlike other games where it actually feels like you're beating people with a blunt stick. In this game, if you hit an enemy's leg, his leg is not there anymore. Which does lead to very interesting kills and makes the game feel a lot more violent and surprisingly satisfying. The rest of the graphics, however, are pretty much the exact same from the first game. In fact, I wouldn't be too surprised to find that they had used the exact same character models. Not there's really anything wrong with that, the graphics were okay in the first game. Now, yes, you will find a little bit more popping graphics this time around than you did in the first game, but it's nothing horrible, and it won't ruin the experience unless you're a serious, serious frame snob. Or the graphics earn a 7 out of 10. They're not terrible, but honestly, they could have been polished a little more, seeing as this came out a few years after the original. Next up, we'll take a look at the soundtrack. This game uses the exact same track from part one, and in areas where new tracks would have been made, they simply rip out tracks from the old films. It frankly feels like they were just phoning it in compared to how much they went into the first game and how much music was there. To top that off, the corny dialogue, particularly between Juno and Starkiller 2, Twilight had a more believable romance than this shit, and trust me, I know how bad of an insult that actually is. The voice actors clearly were only here because they must have signed on for two games. Their performance has dropped quality big time. They're just reading this thing as fast as they can with either no emotion or way over the fucking top. It's a mess, people. Overall, the soundtrack earns a 6 out of 10, but the voices bring it way down. Finally, let's take a look at customer care. Well, frankly, the name is a misnomer. No care was given to this game. It was forced out the door as hard and as fast as possible. No reason to make a good game. We can sucker fans of the first to buy this piece of shit. It is disappointing in almost every possible way. As if it wasn't insult enough, the DLC was partially on disc. God damn it, this game pissed me off. It pisses me off more than most because it's Star Wars, and god damn it, that used to mean something. Used to be, you saw the Star Wars logo, you knew it was high quality, it was fun. I'll be honest with you, the prequels are better than this. Fucking Jar Jar Binks for four hours is better than this game. Overall, I give customer care a 1 out of 10. They didn't care. They took a shit on their hands and wiped it in our face. There is no excuse for a game of this piss poor quality to come out of a company that we know can put good, hard effort into a game. Unacceptable, gentlemen. Unacceptable. Overall, this game earns a 19 out of 50. It is a terrible, god-awful sequel to what was a fantastic standalone. I would say it's the Highlander 2 of Star Wars games, but Highlander 2 got a sequel. This is the Beastmaster 2 of Star Wars games. It is absolutely terrible. And I haven't even mentioned half of what will piss you off when you play this game. There are more facepalm moments in this game than in the entire prequels combined. It is terrible. Just terrible. And I pray, if you watch this video, you will avoid it like the plague. Stick to the first one. That's it for this game. Do you agree? Disagree? Comment below. Let me know. And until next time, my name is Vega Goose saying, that's my opinion. What's yours? I'll see you next time.